In this lesson, we'll create a timed oil sketch of a white cow. The goal here is to create a loose painting. So to do this, I'll time myself. I'll restrict my time for this painting to just one hour. This will keep my brush strokes fresh, quick, and keep the entire painting nice and loose. It'll keep me from obsessing over the details. We'll work with water mixable oil paint. This medium is excellent because it behaves like oil paint. It actually is oil paint, but it can be thinned with water instead of using other harmful materials like turpentine or other types of paint thinners. We'll start with a light, loose sketch, just using a bit of Peng's gray thinned with some water. I'm only concentrating on the contours at this point. And then once I have them in place, I can go back in with a bit of burnt umber and add a little bit of warmth to our lines. I'm also going to start developing some of the shadowed areas that I see. The combination of the burnt umber and the paint's gray will produce some areas that are a bit cooler and some areas that are a bit warmer. These colors will show through underneath the applications that we apply on top. So these initial colors that we're using in this particular painting are somewhat important. With our loose sketch in place, we can start applying some of the local color. In this case, I've mixed a bit of yellow ochre with titanium white to create a warmer cream color. Brush strokes are pulled with this color according to the direction that the fur on the cow grows. As you can see here, some of the colors underneath mix with these applications. This changes the color temperature and the value of the applications as we make them. In this scene, the light is originating from the right side of the picture plane, meaning that most of our lighter values will exist on the right side of the face of the cow, and on the left side, the darker values will exist. On the back of the cow, however, the values are much lighter, and there's a bit of cast shadow behind the head on the body. We'll allow this area of cast shadow to be dominated by the Payne's gray, making it quite a bit cooler than the warmer tones on the upper portion of the back of the cow. We'll also add just a touch of white to lighten up the shadow slightly. We'll allow burnt umber to be dominant in the shadows on the lower portion of the cow, increasing the contrast in this area. We'll also use a bit of this burnt umber with just a touch of Payne's Gray mixed in to darken up some of the areas within the ears. Underneath the left eye, there's quite a bit of reflected light, so we'll use our light cream mixture of titanium white and yellow ochre to lighten up this area. We'll use the same mixture on the lower portion of the cow where we have some strong highlights contrasting the dark shadows. For the snout, we'll apply a bit of flesh color mixed with just a touch of burnt umber. We'll frame out the shape of both of the nostrils, allowing this value to be a bit darker on the lower portion. To add a bit of color, we'll add just a touch of cobalt blue to a couple of locations of shadow. This color, of course, is mixed just slightly with titanium white and a touch of burnt umber, muting it slightly. At this point, it becomes clear that the shape of the shadow behind the head of the cow needs to be lifted quite a bit. So I'll alter the shape using a mixture of Payne's Gray, a touch of titanium white, and just a touch of burnt umber. Now we can begin the process of adjusting the contrast and values. So I'll begin darkening up some of the values, starting with the left side of the head. This color may appear black, but it's actually a mixture of burnt umber, Payne's gray, and a touch of cobalt blue. We'll also darken up some of the areas around the nostrils and some of the shadowed areas on the bottom portion of the cow. While we still have this darker mixture loaded on our brush, we'll slightly darken some of the values on the face. Another contributing factor to keeping this painting loose is sticking with the same brush for the majority of the strokes. I'm using a small, flat brush for most of the applications. We'll continue darkening up some of the areas around the face, making it appear as if it protrudes a bit more, and we'll also darken the area on the bottom portion of the mouth. We'll darken the eyes as well, making the contrast here a bit stronger. You may be tempted to use black here, but remember this is a mixture. Black can make an image appear flat and unnatural if you're not careful. We'll pull a few strokes down to mimic hair that's growing on the outer portion of the ear. And we'll continue to darken up some of the values on the left side of the head. 
we're keeping our brush strokes nice and loose, allowing the contrast and value and color to do the work of describing the form of the subject. Since the paint stays wet for a long period of time, it's very easy to create subtle transitions of value. It's also easy to change the directional strokes that we already have on the surface. These directional strokes go a long way in defining the texture of the subject. For a pop of color, we'll add just a bit of burnt sienna on the upper portion of the back of the cow. Then we can begin pushing some of the lighter values, thus increasing the contrast even further. Again, a mixture of yellow ochre and titanium white is used, this time heavily dominated by the titanium white. Just as we want to avoid using pure black in most circumstances, we also want to be very careful with our usage of white. Typically, white is mixed slightly with another color, toning it down a bit. We'll continue adding a few indications of highlights here and there with the lighter mixture that we've created. We'll soften up the edges of the ear by pulling a few strokes downward, mimicking the hair that grows there, and then we'll continue lightening up some of the values on the back side of the cow. We'll continue making adjustments to the contrast in value, this time on the snout of the cow with a lighter version of our flesh tone. We can blend this color in, creating a smoother transition between the darker versions and the lighter versions. We can also use this color to refine the shape of the nostrils. We'll continue the process of darkening up values as we see fit, this time in the area of the eyes. We want to ensure that the eyes are the darkest area within the painting, by making this area strong in contrast, we'll of course demand more focus to this location. We'll create a stronger highlight just next to these darker values. This again will create more contrast and more focus in this area. We'll also strengthen the highlight on the lower portion of the face. And now we can start considering our background color and the edges. At this point, I've spent about 45 minutes on the oil sketch. So it's definitely time to address the background and put the finishing touches on the painting. Around the edges, I'll use a larger bright brush using a mixture of titanium white with just a touch of yellow ochre mixed in. We'll go around all of the edges of the cow. And as we do so, we can make the edges crisp or softer. With our smaller brush, we can go back and soften up edges where we see fit, in this case, around the ears. And we can also make some of the edges a bit stronger. With our background color in place, we can go back and make some refinements to the painting. First, I'll pull down a few strokes into the wet paint to indicate a bit more of that hair growth in the left ear. And then I'll strengthen up some of the darker values even further. We'll also strengthen up the highlights in a couple of areas as well. Most of these finishing touches are fairly subtle and include adding just a few highlights on the face. You can also soften transitions of color and value in areas. And now my hour is almost complete, so if you're looking to loosen up in your paintings, then why not try a timed oil sketch like this to loosen up? Just a couple of more strokes are added, and now our oil sketch of a cow is complete. If you enjoyed this video, then why not subscribe to the channel? And if you're ready to learn even more about drawing and painting, then why not check out our comprehensive membership program, which includes video courses, weekly live lessons, ebooks, lesson plans, and much, much more. Just click on the button in the center of your screen to learn more about our program, or click on the card in the upper right hand corner. Thank you so much for watching.